And so, ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. Where were you, and what did you do when Donald Trump was named the next president of the United States of America? I was sleeping because I couldn't stay up to watch the whole the whole count. But then the next morning, I opened my phone, saw a giant group chat of me and my buddies talking about it, and someone had a, the party emojis and was, was like, yeah, Trump won, Trump won. And I was like, all right, how about that? Who saw that coming? Get the f*** out of here. Mm. Okay, I was in Berlin. And when I found out, I just woke up. And I saw all these messages in Twitter. So I was lying down in this mezzanine. Uh, in this art space. That's owned by my friend. So I was just, you know, half asleep, basically. And did you have any kind of response? Was there any emotional response or well, anything I couldn't, you thought? Like, I, I thought it was a joke at first. Like many people were joking about it. So I didn't believe at first. So for an hour or so, I still thought that Hillary won, but when I had my coffee and read the news, I realized that it's reality. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it was weird. Okay, that's it. Well, uh... I guess I was uh, on the couch with Adriana and I think we were watching something on Netflix or something and I got a I got a uh, message on my phone from my nephew saying that uh, Trump looked like he was going to be the winner uh, and I didn't really want to hear it so I turned off my phone <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to sleep. <laughs> so I so so when I found out he was definitely the winner would have been the next morning, but I kind of knew uh, what to expect. Is that a good answer? You want me to expand on that? No, that's Maybe it. Can do it again. That's it. That's it. That's an important question for you Americans, not so much for us here. I think when I yeah, I know where I was. I was in bed. Well, sleeping. You use my question and your answer. So because my voice won't okay. be there. Yeah. Okay. When uh, I found out that uh, Trump is the president of, the, of America, I was in bed. I was sleeping because of the time difference. But then I didn't found found out. Maybe, <laughs> but I was in bed. I I woke up and then I read news on my uh, mobile phone. I didn't feel anything. Absolutely nothing, because you know it's it's strange. Uh, these this situation that was in the USA, uh, you know, mm, I was reading uh, posts from my friends and uh, this kind of stuff. You know, voting voting for lesser evil and this. <sighs> this is fucking thing that I'm living here for twenty five years, mm. and. People are now making uh, so much fuss about it. Uh, some crazy guy, uh, uh, non-politician, uh, uh, some who has, uh, uh, who belongs to pre-political, is uh, now the president of the USA. These things, these things, for quarter of a century here in this part of the world. Yeah, just this.
I'll do it. I'll do it in three parts. How about that? Okay. I'll, I'll do it before the election. Before the election, I thought Hillary would win in a landslide. And that was my fault for having uh, hope in the American people that they are not some disgusting. That's something else that's, that sexism has not been discussed as much as it should have been. Because you hear women openly talk about how they would not vote for a woman. And I, it's hard. I want you to find one black person who went on record in 2008 and said, I would not vote for a black person. You won't, fi- you won't find this on record. But you have women who openly say, I would not vote for a woman. A woman should not be become president. And you have men who, of course, agree with that because so many dumb men out there. Um, you know, I think that played a large part of it. So I say that because I was really, Hillary's the only presidential candidate I've ever supported. And I voted for other ones, but I actually supported and I respect Hillary a lot, a great deal. I think she's a, a wonderful person. Uh, so I say that because I thought she was going to win a landslide. So there was that, uh, it's like, okay, we're just going to confirm what should happen. You know, the most qualified candidate in history should win there. So, you know, start off pretty, you know, pretty well. And then you start seeing these, some of these states, polls close and the exit polls start trending different direction. It was just like shock. It's like, no. Um, What's the third part? The third part is just, just weeping. Like, you know, I, I literally sat with, I wish I had my handkerchief on me. Because as soon as that door closed, I just went, just. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, well, I went to bed that night of uh, the election. Like, I had to go to bed early. I had to work the next day. It was terrible. I had to get up at 4.30, and I went into work and stuff, and I was driving in. And I was just so groggy, I didn't even realize that it was already past election day. And when I got into work, I saw one of my coworkers, and he was just so sad. He just looked terrible. And I asked him why, and he said... Trump won. And I just, oh man, it was the best feeling ever. Just, I didn't have anything against Hillary. I just didn't like what she was standing for. But, oh, it was just the best. I said, oh shit, really? That might be the best thing that's ever happened. And, oh, it was just the best. What did you, did you do anything? Did you jump up and down? Did you clap your hands? Did you, can, you, can you actually describe the, the moment? Do you know what I mean? Like, give me like a play by play. Like, were you putting on an apron? What, what were you doing? Um, I was walking into the lobby of the McDonald's that I work at. And right as he said it, I fell to my knees because it was just like, whoa, how did that happen? Like Hillary was ahead when I went to bed. And when I woke up, he was, he was, the president, like, or the president to be, it was crazy. Yeah. So you were really happy. I was pretty happy. Yeah. Um, I was home, and I, for some reason, my partner decided that he wasn't going to look at the news. So, and that, like, I wasn't going, like, I shouldn't either. So, like, we didn't look at it, but then I kept checking. And, like, over the course of the day, like, the evening, it became progressively more clear that Trump was going to win. And then, like, I had a full-on, like, panic attack that night. Um, Like, when I found, like, when I finally found out, um... 
for sure. Because, like, you know, it took a long time for all the votes to get in. Um, yeah, and then I, like, barely slept that night, I think. And then I woke up and it was still true <laughs> the next morning. Mm. Yeah. So I was at home. Yeah. Yes. Pretty good, right? Thank you for that fairness in Iowa. That was Donald. Donald. You coming inside? You coming in? Beautiful. Wow. Melania Jewelry. Oh yeah, right. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. But just this one question: Are you changing as a candidate? Are you becoming? Dad puts the fire in the Everything in life. Trying to get in that room. It's not. It's really not. We're doing so well. I don't want to change. The thing is that. And I was really happy with the debate last night. It was great the way it worked out. We won every single poll, as you know. There were six of them or seven of them. We won all of them. But I had a great time last night. Really had a good time. You mean you don't like it that I was nice to the other candidates? I don't like it. Uh, so on the election day, I was anxious about who's going to be the next president of the United States. Uh, so, but every media said uh, Hillary Clinton going to be the president. President, but however, I didn't believe that through his the commitments. Uh, so the next morning of the election day, uh, I woke up at 6 a.m. and as soon as I woke up, wake up, wake up, I check my phone. I start I start uh, clicking the refreshing button on the Google that I can see the result. Uh, after a few seconds, I saw the the Donald Trump is the president of the United States. So I was like, I could I rubbed my eyes, so I couldn't believe that what's the what's the result? What was the result? So I was very like surprised about it. And also I was like pretty uh, pretty happy about it because. The Donald Trump is the person I uh, believe more than Hillary Clinton, so that's how I did that day. So I was sleeping because I had to work in six in the morning, but I woke up with the news and I was freaking about to cry. <laughs> I was so I was so sad, you know, that America like chose such a like racist. And like a crim, like I don't know, just a, just a bad person. I was so amazed, you know, like that. So many people, um, just voted for him. I was shocked. Can you describe what it was like when you when you woke up and like that moment where you did you flip open a laptop or did you turn on the TV? What was it like? You know, like so take just, us through step by step. You know. Okay, so um, just being undocumented, you know, waking up. And then seeing that this person that doesn't want you to be in this country, just uh, I flipped my phone and like, there's a new president. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like Trump. Like, I was shocked. You know, I couldn't believe it. I was uh, for, for sure left without words. was at Trio on Burnside in Northeast Portland with three of my good friends and and uh, then all hell broke loose after that. But the good thing was my friends were, um, I, I actually paired up to my buddy and a guy that I'm dating and they had a meeting to um, to work on an invention. So I felt like God, they're still doing, they're doing some really creative, cool things. And they were down in Northwest Portland, like in downtown Chinatown. And we were going to meet up with them right after the election because he had to go to his brother's house to do something. Um, and he was really distraught. He was more distraught than I was. Like, like he made me feel upset. I'm like trying to, I was the one trying to like lift everybody up saying like, 
hey, we're going to be okay. Like, we're working on our on a new project, a new invention. We might get to go to Japan. Like, I'm still me. You're still you. And together, we can still do things. <laughs> So, and he was just like, the world is terrible, everything is wrong, it's going to be a terrible day tomorrow, and <laughs> I'm just like, no, no, I was like trying to be the cheerleader, like, no, no, we got this, we got this, we're going to be just fine, you guys, we're going to be just fine, <laughs> and he's like, wrong. Once they said that uh, he had won Florida, I was like, okay, that's it, you know. And uh, it really felt kind of weird. And um, so, but at that point moment, it was getting late. So um, I remember then uh, some people... The CNN panel finally accepted that, yeah, Donald Trump was going to be the president. So I was like, OK, <laughs> um, we have to think about the things that for me, I live in I'm a Mexican national and I live in Mexico and uh, it has a direct impact on the country. And uh, I think the main problem is that uh, Trump is going to scapegoat Mexico. Um, as if we were the ones who invented NAFTA and we got all the benefit of it, which is not true. We didn't invent it. We were actually, NAFTA was imposed on the country and not necessarily we have benefited more from it. I think both the working class in the U.S. and the working class in Mexico have been hurt by NAFTA. It has been the, the rich people, like the, the business class, who have benefited both in Mexico and in the U.S., but uh, I think Trump is going to scapegoat Mexico. So I was worried because that means uh, there's we already are in a recession, in an economic recession. So the recession is going to deep, deepen a bit more. Um, on the other hand, we in Mexico, we, we want to be optimistic about it. We think that it's also an opportunity to clean up our house a little and do things different because we are not going to be able to rely on a friendly government in the U.S., at least for a couple of years. Um, I was watching the returns in bed. My wife had already fallen asleep and I woke her up and we were both just totally beside ourselves. It, like, first of all, I think my wife, like it, 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 it was like, the absolute worst thing that ever happened. Like I thought she was going to break down and start sobbing. Mm. And I was just like, I was almost incredulous that it even happened. Like I could, I couldn't believe that it happened. Um, so I don't know. I, I was, I was in, I was in my house in my room watching um, all the channels I could, but I actually was watching MSNBC um, more and more as it got to be more and more of a reality because they were just like going off the deep end. Um, because I mean, they obviously thought that uh, he wasn't going to win. And I certainly didn't think that he was going to win. I mean, you know, we had, we, we've just moved to Ohio. And uh, one of the things I was excited about moving to Ohio was that for once, um, like I really felt like my vote was going to actually count because I, I was in a contested state. Um, so like we, 
did everything we could to get registered. Um, we had to go through this whole rigmarole on election night just to vote. And I don't even know if our if our vote was counted because they gave us provisional ballots. But I mean, we did all of that just so we could vote against Donald Trump. So the fact that he was elected, uh, dude, I was like shitting my pants. It's on. It's unreal. It's terrible. Uh, I was sitting on my couch. I had my television, my computer, my phone, all watching the uh, everything unfold. And when I saw it happened, I went and grabbed a beer from the refrigerator. <laughs> and did you have any kind of Shit. emotional response or anything? Um, I was surprised. Uh, I would have been not the happiest of campers either way, uh, but I wasn't expecting what happened i was i pretty much knew that hillary clinton was going to win i was i was very surprised i know the carpenters understand and members of the labor movement understand you built this country you built the american middle class and said, we look out for each other. We're all in this together. So we do have to bargain together, stick together, and resist together whenever ever anyone comes along who tries to divide and conquer. You know, you don't make America great by getting rid of everything that made America great in the first place. Okay, uh, I couldn't really grasp how big the, this issue is or not. Uh, uh, maybe this was already kind of obvious. I don't know. I don't. I didn't think really. I had so much hope for Hillary nor for America, uh, unless some certain kind of this radical uh, shift could take place, or at least people know that uh, it's really, really, realistically horrible situation. Uh, and as you can see, what's happening in Korea, I think it's kind of a necessary process to go through this horrible uh, dictators or horrible dicks to be in power so that the people really uh, feel certain power in them that or uh, some kind of uh, 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 urge to to act um, yeah so well, my reaction I mean it was like a chicken I was sitting in the, the living room it was like Oh my God, no, that's not going to be happen. Oh my God, uh, and you're checking your phone uh, to see whether New York Times were really lying about it, and also Guardian was lying about it. Everybody was lying about it, and don't know uh, what was going on. Uh, and then there was uh, Trump, but actually. Uh, I didn't stay until the final final because it was uh, it was unnecessary to uh, know when you know already he was going to be the president. And then it was kind of uh, uh, really like you know you see that your body is kind of like all like twisted inside. Mantenidos, mantenidos, mantenidos. Aquí no hay de comida. 
I was uh, I was in my basement and uh, with my wife, and we had set up this uh, you know this nice food spread for the evening, and uh, we had some some uh, nice wine and uh, some uh, sparkling wine in the fridge that we were ready to celebrate, and uh, I suppose it was about. 9:30 on Eastern Time when uh, you know the writing was on the wall and uh, I started to uh, you know play the game the catch-up game well you know if, if only uh, you know we get Virginia or whatever and pretty much by 9 30 10 o'clock you kind of knew you knew the writing was on the wall my wife was uh, just in like total anger mode. And I kind of felt like, sort of like, you know, the feeling you might get when you know you're going to die in a fire and it's just like hilarious. So I was just kind of, you know, laughing all evening at how ridiculous and stupid but insane it was. So, um, you know, turned out to be a, a very, uh, a very strange evening. I'll just put it that way. Um. I don't know. I still can't believe it. It's like, you know, I, I feel like I've passed so many, uh, different phases since three weeks ago, you know, um, just going from not quite knowing how to process it to, you know, being totally angry and like protesting up broad street over it to just, you know, I think I'm in the uh, the ignoring ignoring politics phase right now. You know, I've been walking around like taking pictures of maple trees and like spending time with my kids and trying to um, you know remember that there are more important things in life, I suppose, than who the president of the United States is. But uh, you know, still a pretty poor reflection on the state of affairs in this country and what that might mean for my three kids, um, my business, just people's livelihood. Um, you know, it's a damn shame. And, uh, I hope there's some silver lining out of it though. And I hope that, uh, you know, it, it, it changes, uh, America's conscious conscience to, to some degree. It has to. And I just had to have a moment of just accepting that this is what the country came to. Uh, that a guy could say these things about women, could, you know, have this history, not even be a politician, and could come and be the leader and have all these access codes to so many different things. Um, and a woman who was perfectly qualified, you know, had all this time to show us, you know, what she was about, you know, she didn't win. So it just kind of showed me where the country was. But yeah, that's, that's my answer to that. It's, I just said, this is what the country's come to. He made a mockery of us. That's, that's the way I look at it. Uh, I am... I was and still am. I am cautiously optimistic, um, but uh, we will we will see. Uh, I, I'm not hardcore for or against him. Um, uh, I think that uh, you know he he. There's a lot of things that he says that I that I am on board with, and then there's other things that. You know, I, I have no idea if he even knows what he's talking about. Oh, well, <laughs> I was in my house and I thought it was a joke at first. And I literally, like, I thought, like, somebody was going to come on and be like, oh, yeah, it was just, like, a big joke. And then I started seeing, at first, what really hit me was, like, I was like, no, like, Donald Trump is not going to win. And then all the states started getting redder and redder and redder and redder. And then I was like, oh, no, but she still got to win the last eight. And then she were good. 
you know, talking about Hillary. And then once I saw that it was all right and they announced, like, officially and you see, like, the news and how everyone in the Hillary campaign was just, like, sad and everybody in the Trump campaign was just, like, going crazy. I was just, like, honestly, I was, like, okay, the end of the world has started. This is the beginning of the apocalypse. <laughs> and seriously... And then I thought about, like, all the stuff that people say about the Bible and everything. And I said, this is it. I said, and then I was like, okay, everyone, I went on Facebook and I said, guys, you're worrying about the wrong things. Now what we need to do is worry about preparing for the purge. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> the day before the elections, I was driving down uh, to the party because I was volunteering up to the end. And uh, a... Uh, all of a sudden, like this really bad feeling set in the car. And I had to stop it. I was on 51. And he was like, and what about if he wins? And what about if he, and, and, and the feeling or the communication was, a, well, other people in the world have had to live these kinds of experiences. And now it's going to be your time to live it. I was sitting in my living room and I was working and I guess I was surprised, but also I kind of saw it coming from, from a mile away too. Not necessarily that it would be Trump, but either this president or the next one was going to be someone who was an out political outsider because I think people were just so fed up with the establishment. Any emotional response? Happiness, uh, sadness? I mean, I was happy it wasn't Hillary. That would be, I guess, the level of happiness. I was happy it wasn't Hillary. Like I said, it was Trump, you know, and I, like, it, I think it could have been anyone outside of the establishment group, but considering her just, like, ties to Saudi Arabia and all them, I was happy it wasn't Hillary. Cool. Perfect. We're done. <laughs> I I don't I don't think Donald Trump is a bad guy. He's in my eyes, he's a celebrity. He's an entertainer and I'm an entertainer. So I I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he he apply for a job that is bigger than him. <laughs> it's bigger than, uh, than most of us. And I just hope he realizes that in a sense, he's representing an entire country. And I hope he fights for each and every person in the country, in our country. My teacher did this great thing um, where I, I teach third grade. So she's like, there's a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings going on right now. So I want all of you to just journal about your thoughts and we can share in our morning meeting. And a lot of the kids were like, I'm scared. I'm anxious. I was really excited for a woman president. Um, I don't know what it means for my family. Um, we even had kids crying in the office because the, uh, they were telling other kids that, oh, my family is moving to France. We're moving to England. Um, we're just not going <laughs> to, you know. Um, but then we talked about it because uh, we read this novel the day before about what happens when life comes up short. And what we can do. It's kind of the littlest string. And it's like what we can do um, when life comes up short. And uh, then after we just shared our feelings and everything, um, we talked about uh, resilience. You read another book about like the hugging tree and how we can be most resilient even on the cliff and still blossom and grow. So I feel like being in that environment helped me a lot to deal with um, 
my feelings, which I still, which I still can barely talk about. Like all, I just kind of blow it off with, oh yeah, we're living in the Hunger Games, so I'm really actually going to start going to the gym now, so I can like protect myself and, um, you know, uh, really making things happen now, just um, for my own personal safety and the people around me. That's my. That's been my general action plan since um, election night. Tone for a Buddhist response to the election of Trump is supposed to be uh, this kind of weepy, gray. Everything is everything is awful, but we we need to be peaceful about it, or or some shit like that. Uh, and uh, and I feel I at pains to point out that I did vote against Donald Trump, and I do not like him. And uh, but I I took the I took the tone that uh, maybe we don't need to panic and feel like the world is going to end. And I, I don't think lions roar and the Buddhist community in general um, wanted to hear that. They wanted to hear more sort of gray, weepy, uh, you know, this stuff that they like where everything is hopeless, but, but we're Buddhists and we'll get through this hopeless, awful thing. Well, I remember on election night, I was going to try to stay up until I heard, but then it was like one in the morning and I was like, God, I'm so tired. So... What happened was it was when I woke up the next morning at like 530 in the morning for class, I just saw on my phone and I was like totally half asleep. It said Donald Trump won the presidency as I was scrolling through Facebook. I was just like, well, today's going to be a very interesting day on social media. And that was probably what was the most interesting part is how social media was affected. I mean, I feel like. It's been a lot of, and then there was a billion protests. I remember that wherever I was walking around in the city of Rochester, I saw protests everywhere. And I, when I was there, just at going back to, I'm kind of go, saying a billion things at once, but when I saw it, I was like, this, this is what I'll think. Let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance. I'm not a Trump supporter. I do not support him, but I say he deserves a chance. Like this mustache I'm trying to grow. I think it deserves a chance. He deserves a chance. Uh, well, the first reaction was, okay, so, you know, you have to deal with it. And that's what people choose. And then apparently it's not what everybody chooses. Uh, well, whatever. I mean, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Do you remember who you were talking to? Well, all the, the, the old environmental things. And um, her idea about opening up the mind, that would be like a very going down. But, and my idea was like, well, I, I mean, maybe I'm too, in, I don't know, too, too good to believing or whatsoever. But I thought, who's going to open these minds? And what, what are they going to do? I mean, it's so disruptive. It's so not so in the direction we're moving anyway as a society. Well, that's my idea. I um, was by myself in my apartment and I actually stayed home all day because I actually got sick that day. I don't know, I guess my mental health <laughs> was, my anxiety actually made me sick. I, the whole day, couldn't eat until right 
when I saw that he won Florida, I ordered Krispy Kreme donuts, started eating them, passed out because of my almost depression, woke up, and I saw that he won, and I was just too nauseated and to eat any more donuts. So he ruined my donut experience and my next four years, but he's probably going to get impeached, but... <laughs> I found out the next morning at work because when when the polls looked unfavorable to Clinton, I went to sleep. I refused to have watched it in real time. So when I got to work and I didn't I didn't have on the radio whatsoever in the car. I didn't want to hear a thing. And I was just praying that there was some chance that a miracle happened overnight while I was asleep, but I didn't want to ask anybody to figure it out if it happened or not. So when teachers came into the teacher's lounge upset, I knew at that moment that Donald Trump was president. And my heart sunk into my stomach, but I was going to be teaching in 15 minutes, so I had to pull it together. I don't know. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't like super, I was a little surprised, but I wasn't like shocked. And I thought all the people who were like, Oh my God, I can't believe like you can believe it. Like this is not super surprising at all. Like people love low hanging fruit and that's what Donald Trump serves up. So I don't know. I was just like, oh, God damn it. I really thought she bought that election. I really thought that she was going to, um, you know, win because she paid for it. But uh, I don't know. And as sort of the day sort of wore on, it became, it became, um, and both a shock and not a surprise at the same time, due to I mean all the, the incidents of the, in the world with with uh, where the far right has been rising in Europe, in Southeast Asia for a long time, in the Philippines, in South Korea, and so on and so forth. And um, it, it sort of the the one thing that flashed back was kind of ironic. Funnily enough, the previous night when I was having drinks with a couple of friends, some of which from EGS. Uh, um, and we were talking about one of the ironies of, or one of the problems maybe of democracy is that it ultimately is the power of the demos, which is in, in itself not a problem, but the people that rise to power through that tend to be demagogues, which is pretty much precisely what happened. Yeah. Um, I found out Donald Trump was president right after I watched Doctor Strange. I watched, like, I think it was at an 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. screening, and I got out of the theater at, like, 10 or 11. And my friend, I was with my friends uh, Vanessa and Murr, and she checks her phone, and she goes, oh, my God. I'm like, what? And she's like, Donald Trump won. And then that's when I noticed we saw it at the Chinese theater, Mad Chinese Theater. Or I guess it's... China Chinese theater, whatever it is, it's owned by China now. Um, it was almost completely empty, and the streets were empty. And I live walking distance from the theater, so when I was walking home, I noticed that every place was empty except for bars. There were a handful of people in them, and no one was talking to each other. They were just um, drinking somberly. And then I decided to do the same thing, and I got hammered. <laughs> I just didn't know what else to do. It was it was pretty intense. Like I don't think I've felt anything like that in my life. It was just a very tangible, like uh, you know? So Yeah, and before I watched the movie, it was such a roller coaster to watch the the uh state results. Cause that because in the morning it was all blue and I'm like, oh Hillary's gonna win. And then all of a sudden it became red. 
And then states were switching back and forth, and I was refreshing like minute by minute. And some states were going blue, red, blue, red, blue, red every 30 seconds. So it was just amazing that that was the climax because even up until like the very moment I went to watch the movie, I had no idea. Just had no idea. And obviously, from the way I'm talking, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, or else I'd be celebrating and happy. And I also remember uh, walk, when, when I was walking home, I walked by Donald Trump's star, and they were having some sort of Trump supporter party around his Hollywood star. And it was still smashed at the time because a vandalist uh, broke his star. So there was still tape around it and stuff. But there were only like five people there who were Donald Trump supporters. And I couldn't even tell if it was real. I thought it was fake because they looked like cartoon characters. Like there was this old Asian woman, this weird looking old white guy with like a red hat, this old black guy. And like the thing that held them together, I guess, was that they were all old. Like none of them looked young. It was very interesting. And they were, yeah, they, they didn't seem like extremely ecstatic about it, but they seemed fairly happy. It was just odd. So that was my November 8th uh, Donald Trump experience. And I remember the next day, um, I read an article about, I think it was from the NAACP. No, sorry, the ACLU. And they said they got more donations that night and that day after Donald Trump got elected than they did after 9 11 which is very interesting. Uh, I think I was home. Uh, I was just doing my regular Monday morning thing. I guess nothing special, nothing too big. Did you, did you care who won or did you have any opinion? <laughs> I honestly didn't care. Um, I will. Uh, I will be honest. I was hoping for Hillary to win, only because I wanted the first female president. But hey, we didn't get what we wanted. Uh, it was really quite scary. I didn't know how to feel because I. It felt like, as an artist, it felt like everything that I was going to try my hardest to work towards was almost 10 times farther away than it was before. Because I'm not only a woman, but I'm black. And those two already set me apart for making any of the goals that I want to, to have hard. And there's somebody here that hates me already or has already presumed to dislike me for that out of the gate. And I just... It just felt like everything I wanted to do was going to be 10 times harder. I could possibly get arrested or I just, it was just a whole bunch of bad ideas going through my mind and it, and it really upset me. sleep and, and then, um, you know, just be sort of disappointed or full of emotions or whatever. But the, the interesting thing is, is I woke up out of a cold sleep at 3.30 that morning and um, just uh, really had a terrible feeling. Um, not predicated on anything that the media told me, not anything but just a feeling of kind of a uh, not a doomsday, nothing crazy like that, but, but certainly, um, very uneasy, very kind of, um, if there's ever a point in my life where I wasn't necessarily sure what to make of things, I think that's what I was feeling when I woke up at three 30. It was a feeling of man, you know, 40 years of kind of expecting life to go up and down, but now don't know. And that was the first time in my life, I think, that, you know, 
gone through all kinds of different things. Um, I have often thought that I did not need, I, I told people who, if, if, they, if I ever had an opportunity to get into an argument with a Trump supporter, I would say, look, I don't need to go with, I don't need to use his racism on you just to, to uh, come at you about your vote for Trump. I don't even need that. I don't even need the sexism. I don't need the misogyny and the predatory behavior. I don't need any of that. We can go all the way back to one of the first things that happened in the campaign when he made fun of that reporter who had the physical disability and the disease that caused him to have a shake and a palsy. And he made fun of that. And then everyone who supports Trump tried to excuse it away or make light of it or say that it didn't mean what it meant. But I know what it meant. And as somebody with a disability, uh, it pained me to see a grown man uh, making fun of somebody with a disability. I learned from a very early age from my mom that you don't do that. You don't make fun of somebody with a disability. That's one of the worst things you can do. And by the time you're a grown man, you should know not to do that. There's lots of conversations that are happening, man. White privilege, what that is, right? And anytime you say that, there's always a backlash somehow. But I think conscious people, I trust conscious people, you know, are, and not to say that Trump supporters and voters are not, right? I'm just looking for a bigger conversation, man. I just think we keep evolving around a very small space, man, intellectually. Um, we haven't really grown or evolved much as human beings. We've dressed some shit up. We've created some technologies to do shit faster, quicker. But we're still very barbaric in our actions. We haven't really, and we've used religion and a whole lot of other stuff to keep people dazed and confused. The ideas of it, the concepts of it, you sell them this, but you do this, right? I sell to you that you go pray to Jesus and he'll take care of you, but I'm gonna shoot and kill you. And then go to that same church in a different part of town on Sunday, right? So the idea, these ideas, and, and I understand why people are crazed and out of their minds. A lot of those who are suffering Will they get really getting taken care of? And I mean, poor white America, the Appalachians and the West Virginians, right? They're going to have a real wake-up call because Trump ain't really, really thinking about them. He says he is. So we'll have to see. So a lot of, I don't really, you know, I'm just going, I want to see. I want to see uh, that he's going to make America be better again. If it starts with infrastructure, you know, will he hold on to that that idea, man? But I know the re the the election has given me a kind of a wonderful upliftment that it's a game is on, on all levels. You know, and uh, there's a lot of controversy and a lot of chatter and dialogue about Middle Easterns, uh, to be specific, Muslims having to register, whatnot. You know, mm. talks of it. You know, if uh, but I'm gonna say this: that ever implemented, even anybody tries to implement it, I don't care about anybody else. They're gonna drag my dead body. I'm not registering for nothing for nobody. Mm. Come take me away. No, not in a million years. Not in a million years. Might sound silly, you know, they show up on my doorsteps uh, trying to force me. I like to think that's not going to happen. You know, those type of thoughts, you know, and it's, I was talking to somebody like, well, you know, what if you did? What's the big deal? You know, it's not like you're a bad guy. You got, you got none to hide. And so just for that, I'm not going to do it. I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. It's a slippery slope. I just can't do it. 
Now that comes from somebody who has no religious affiliation of any kind, as far as I'm concerned. But it doesn't matter, you know, they, you're automatically in that box. Um, where were you and what did you do when you found out that Donald Trump was going to be the next president of the United States of America? Awesome. <laughs> uh, so I was actually at the Javits Center um, in New York City when I found out Donald Trump would be president. I was there for Hillary's what was supposed to be the victory party. Um, so, and it had started great. I hadn't slept in a while. It was fine. I had been at headquarters the day before, and then I went to Philadelphia for this huge rally that they had with, uh, the Obamas, all three Clintons, Bruce Springsteen, Bon Jovi, came back, changed, because I got back in the middle of the night, changed, voted, went to the Javits. Um, so I was there from about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning until 2.30 in the morning when John Podesta came out and told everybody to go home. So, like, I guess we didn't find out then, but, I mean, obviously at, like, 1 or 1.30, they just shut off the news um, and started playing Ain't No Mountain High Enough and Don't Stop Believin'. So at that point, we it started to really sink in. But I mean, even by like nine, eight thirty, nine o'clock, we started to get super nervous, and the mood just totally shifted. And it went from people being really excited to people kind of just sitting there, like, "Oh my god," really focused on just begging whatever they believe in. To um, we were like, just we just want to win. Like we don't care about how much. We just want to win. Um, so it was a really interesting evening. And people I was with, some accepted it really early on. And by like 10.30 p.m., we're sobbing. And I mean, by the time we left, a friend of mine who worked on the campaign hadn't accepted it yet. Um, and was still kind of in shock and not really processing. And um, we left the Javits after Podesta spoke, walked to a bar, like some really crappy Midtown bar, um, we were like, well, okay, Podesta said, like, we're just going to wake up in the morning and there's still votes to count. So, like, let's see what happens. And we walk into this bar, so probably around three in the morning, and we saw on the screen before we even ordered uh, that she had called to concede. And we, like, never ordered. We just, like, walked out, like, wandered the city for a while. These two assemblymen from Atlanta figured out, like, that we had also come from the Javits. And so they talked to us for a little while. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I was essentially at the victory party, long story short. Right now, China, Japan, Mexico, every single country that we do business with just rips us. We don't know what we're doing. We have leaders that are grossly incompetent. We don't know what we're doing. If I'm elected president, we will make great trade deals. We'll bring back our jobs. We're going to have one great country again. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.